what we do is uh, okay um this is a as we know this is a virtual boot camp and then uh, we have uh, uh, we have about 20 hours to learn that means it it covers about uh, uh, about a month uh, three three weeks to four weeks and then also we'll have assignments um, and uh, about uh, quizzes for every session and also we'll do a small uh, project so that we get a good hold on uh, uh, python um, programming language all right so um uh, we, uh, because, because, uh, before uh, starting i just wanted to uh, tell that okay and the first half of the uh, session that that is like uh, first uh, maybe uh, about 10 to 12 hours or maybe 8 to 10 hours we will uh, largely focus on um, uh, python uh, uh, code related stuff um, we'll just try learn the syntax uh, how it is used and how to compile and how to get it running so that is one part and second part is uh, uh, interesting uh, second part we'll do a mini project um, uh, something like um, uh, we will take a project and uh, we'll uh, cut it into different uh, pieces and then we'll try to solve the um, solve the uh, problem and then we'll uh, make it a project and uh, i hope it will be an interesting journey okay so what i need uh, from you guys is uh, i want uh, uh, a small commitment that means maybe you spend uh, about half an hour or one hour per day just to uh, get good uh, hold on language and if you complete assignments and uh, quizzes that would be i'd be very happy and it should be very encouraging for me as well and uh, um, uh, uh, trust me i'm spending a lot of time uh, just to uh, prepare uh, quizzes and assignments and uh, uh, i'm getting um, the, all the students background uh, such as uh, um, like that. there are people who are doing uh, uh, research on biotechnology there are people who are doing hardware related automation so uh, I am thinking from their perspective as well and at preparing uh, uh, this course so that even if you don't know programming language you get a, a basic uh, um, a boot up that uh, and then you you kind of uh, learn how the programs run and how to uh, write programs so once uh, once you finish this uh, course I'm sure you will be able to grasp other languages also because uh, in this session uh, especially we are going to talk about how does the program work so um, uh, coming to the session, our goal is to learn uh, how the computer program uh, get uh, gets executed, and uh, in the end we will just write a simple um, Python program just to print something. So, okay, so uh, let us get started. So how does the pro how does computers program work? All right. Uh, actually, um, uh, it's uh, computer is uh, made up of uh, very uh, simple parts. Uh, the architecture is very simple. That means it it contains only few blocks. So the diagram that you're seeing towards your right is actually a, a computer architecture. So this architecture uh, con consists of uh, a processor, um, a RAM, and uh, there is also a, a ROM, and uh, there are input output ports. So processor is nothing but your uh, chip that uh, resides on your uh, uh, mobile and then laptop and uh, everywhere else where the code runs. So that is a processor. That guy is the one who does all the job. So processor. Um, actually works on very basic uh, uh, calculations such as addition, subtraction and uh, boolean operations such as AND um, or uh, things like this. So it has any calculations that we do uh, finally gets percolated to this uh, few operations and uh, processor will be able to um, process those um, uh, calculations or comments. And then uh, why do you have RAM? We have RAM because um, RAM consists of uh, um, uh, consists of uh, RAM is a special device where uh, you can uh, store data and uh, uh, store data in a sense. Uh, it, uh, it, how how is it different from um, a hard disk? Uh, because it is also a storing uh, uh, device. So hard disk is a is a persistent uh, memory. That means uh, once you switch off your laptop. Um, the uh, all the data that is stored in ram is automatically flushed off and then uh, um, uh, the, uh, but on the on the uh, hard disk your data is persistent the reason is because uh, it's very simple um, it's a magnetic device and magnetic device can uh, uh, consistently store uh, data and it it has a, a slow uh, erosion but uh, uh, but it's it's it, it is uh, uh, very reliable but the RAM is, RAM is uh, made up of uh, uh, capa cap capacitors and uh, su such uh, highly electrically volatile um, uh, uh, devices. 
and that is why it um, it carries uh, it can only uh, carry the charges and uh, once you switch off your PC it's gone so the the idea is to uh, uh, now also the CPU contains a small spaces for memory those are called registers so uh, a CPU has an uh, has a calculate uh, has a uh, has a has a uh, uh, has a pointer or a, um, a, a pointer uh, which um, always tries to point to the next in instruction and then uh, also there are registers which carry uh, some data which is to be processed uh, inside the CPU. Uh, so uh, there are now we have learned about three types of memories. One is yeah, that is in, in, inside the chip which is called as a register and um, second is the RAM um, which is uh, uh, capacity, uh, capacity uh, based and then uh, there is hard disk. Now, when you typically uh, boot the system, what happens is uh, uh, there is a, a small link between uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, there is a small piece that uh, uh, operating systems uh, initial memory. So uh, when you install a system, uh, when you install a system, uh, it um, hard disk has um, a, a magic um, uh, memory location. Uh, so that is a uh, that is also called as a, um, uh, boot, uh, okay, um, uh, there is a bootloader which will try to pick up the beginning uh, address of uh, hard disk and then from there it tries to find out uh, the operating system and then it loads into the RAM. So that is why all your phones, um, uh, even, the, even though the companies say that the, the phones are of uh, 6 GB, 8 GB RAM, so maybe about uh, 2 to 3 GB or 4 GB is consumed by Android operating system itself. So once you switch on the uh, uh, switch on your mobile device or the laptop, so operating system gets loaded into the RAM. So as long as the uh, uh, charge is provided to laptop or uh, mobile, so RAM says, uh, stays uh, has a uh, continuous continuous inflow of uh, charges that is electricity, and then it keeps the data intact. And uh, and these these are always uh, sent towards the uh, towards the CPU and CPU is, is the one who is doing all the job. So why don't we? Uh, so what is the uh, constraint that uh, uh, that CPU CPU cannot have one GB or two GB memory? That is because CPU is uh, made up of uh, uh, silicon and uh, and then uh, it's really difficult to you know um, insert or increase the memory uh, at that level. Um, so it's really difficult and it's uh, almost impossible to put GBs of memory. So it has very few, uh, maybe in in terms of KB um, the. Um, so, so that is that is the reason so and then it is uh, it is highly costly to make that chip and uh, that is why uh, the memory is uh, uh, low uh, one thing is we cannot uh, uh, increase any memory uh, second thing is about also the co cost and uh, ram uh, ram comes uh, comes like it, it doesn't come in hundreds of gbs uh, for uh, for uh, uh, normal users so it has uh, um, uh, say 4 gb 8 gb and then you, you just need to buy it and insert it into your uh, uh, pc or uh, small rams uh, that comes for uh, mobiles so uh, ram is a little bit costlier uh, than the hard disk uh, but uh, definitely a lot cheaper than the uh, registers uh, and uh, uh, which lie in, inside the cpu so there is a cost uh, problem and there is a uh, uh, there is a making problem so uh, because of all this it's like uh, uh, moving uh, what we can imagine is uh, it's like moving uh, goods from one big godown which is nothing but hard disk to a smaller uh, shop which is nothing but our uh, ram and from there we pick up uh, the items and uh, give it uh, delivery to um, uh, uh, at homes so uh, so our home is nothing but our cpu so where all the calculations are the all, all the action happens so this is the flow of uh, how the programs or um, data is get uh, getting processed inside the computer so now uh, let us think about uh, let us uh, let us learn about how the programs are executed so uh, anyone uh, like uh, what are what are programs programs are nothing but uh, they're uh, they're uh, uh, just an uh, executable which is ready to be consumed uh, they contain instructions they contain a little bit of data and um, that is to be consumed by uh, cpu so when you uh, when you double click something on on your laptop what happens is uh, operating system such as windows or linux what happens is 
it picks up um, that um, executable and uh, tries to uh, load it into the into the ram it is possible that uh, ram is of 1 gb and your actual executable is of 4 gb and once you double click it uh, what happens is uh, uh, it's the job of um, operating system to send uh, data in terms of uh, batch by batch so this is also called as uh, uh, paging and uh, uh, it's it's not right to get into details of operating system basics but this is how the the general um, handing uh, handing over of uh, uh, instructions takes place from the hard disk operating system loads into the ram and then uh, from the ram there is an instruction pointer uh, which is residing inside the cpu it, it tries to uh, uh, get an inf information if there is no information the process exits so sometimes uh, when you click uh, uh, the x mark uh, that is uh, that is here uh, say um, that is in the ppt here so that means uh, you are uh, specifically asking um, uh, programs to um, uh, to close so that means uh, i i don't need any more uh, there are uh, there are two uh, ways to ways to terminate the progr program one is uh, through interrupts that means uh, one of the interrupts is to um, send uh, some kind of signals through uh, uh, through the uh, through the keyboard or through the um, uh, mouse or any other interface so one is interface and uh, the, the second way is uh, there, there is no there, is, there are no more instructions to be um, uh, uh, calculated so that is how the process ex uh, exits so there is a there is a life cycle of a process uh, which operating system uh, are designed to uh, uh, do that so uh, take the uh, there is a there is loading part that we learnt and there is also uh, there are different states of the processes like it's a ready state and sometimes it could be waiting for uh, uh, waiting for an instruction for example this ppt is a uh, waiting for uh, any any instruction one of the instructions that i can do is i can just press arrow mark and go back to the previous slide like this so it is waiting process uh, which is waiting for a command to be executed and it it takes in so um, that is how the uh, processes um, uh, uh, in short it has a it, it has its own life cycle and then it gets terminated and then once it is terminated its uh, operating system's job is to also um, uh, clean up the uh, clean up the memory and um, also uh, programs themselves they say that okay i'm releasing the, i'm exiting and clean my uh, memory so there are different ways to clean the memory and make space for the next incoming incoming uh, uh, processes you might be seeing that uh, in old uh, laptops if you if you are using old laptops uh, or your old pieces where we used we used to have uh, a big box of monitor and then a, a, a small uh, box of uh, cpu so uh, programs used to get uh, hung now also if you if you open a lot of tabs um, that means you are trying to load uh, too many programs into the into the ram and there is a context switch that is happening uh, operating system is trying very hard to uh, uh, prioritize which task to uh, complete first and then which instruction to send to the CPU. So this context switching, uh, when uh, when operating system uh, cannot handle anymore, what happens is uh, it just uh, in, in in Windows it says uh, it gives a, a blue screen telling that the programs have crashed and I cannot handle it anymore uh, and such things. Okay, and also task manager. Uh, task manager is nothing but uh, to uh, it. It ma it monitors these uh, processes, and then um, it it gives a gist of uh, how how much memory is being consumed by a certain um, processes and how much um, uh, uh, how much is left. So uh, these are the and also task manager uh, will warn you now, now that okay if you are reaching about eighty percent of your uh, RAM or CPU. Um, uh, capacity and it, it says okay now uh, there is you need to close some programs uh, such uh, warning systems are in place so this is how the general programming languages work and um, uh, not programming languages this is how the programs gets loaded and executed in the cpu so this is very important uh, uh, i mean we can skip this uh, uh, first lesson because uh, this is not necessary for uh, uh, exactly for Python, but uh, if you are from a, a non-computer science background, what happens is uh, it's really difficult for uh, people who are uh, who don't know anything about uh, computers 
and um, uh, they kind of uh, always wonder how does the program work and uh, why why is it why do i have to write programs why it uh, reacts in certain way so if you know uh, these things uh, you can easily relate as well as it will help you to search uh, search right keywords in in, in google um, and then you it you will it will help to uh, drive through the problem so this is why you need to know how the uh, how the programs work and also we'll see why there is a, uh, there are so many different languages and why what uh, sort of problems that uh, programming language uh, python solves so uh, coming to um, the the uh, the executables uh, what happens is uh, one of the uh, one of the um, uh, okay uh, so the processes as we uh, uh, said uh, uh, this will be sent to processors and processors understand only one language that is uh, zeros and ones what are these zeros and ones in uh, in, in lemon terms is actually they are simply uh, voltages and uh, uh, cpu is just trying to play around with voltages so finally uh, uh, these voltages are represented by ones and zeros and uh, then uh, to uh, it is difficult to write. Uh, it is uh, it is difficult to write code in uh, ones and zeros. But it is, it is definitely possible to write uh, code in uh, ones and zeros. But it's um, why it is difficult is because if you write a program in ones and zeros and try to uh, manually load or if there is a, a system that you can uh, load it, load it into the uh, processors, uh, you don't need an operating system to do that. You can do it uh, manually. There are uh, there could be different ways. Uh, but uh, however, um, if uh, if it is if it is uh, uh, if it is if it is possible then uh, um, uh, it is very difficult to write, uh, write maintain and read code because if someone throw, uh, throws at you uh, a code like this then uh, it's uh, it's really d difficult and always this machine code is always tied to that particular chip um, so that is one of the challenges so there are so many chips uh, which are which are uh, in the market and which will come and go um, but uh, you can see that the programming languages are not uh, changing so much so how is that handled um, is, uh, is, is is the question so to make this machine code much easier to write uh, what we uh, what people did uh, did was they started writing uh, code in assembly uh, level language which uh, looks like um, uh, this okay uh, which looks like this so this is actually an automation um, of machine code so uh, so we have moved from uh, hardware voltages uh, to uh, automate those voltages we are, we have machine code and to automate this uh, machine code we have assembly level language but this is still uh, very very much tied to that particular hardware what happens is when uh, when when people uh, like uh, well, when companies like Intel, AMD, Nvidia, uh, Qualcomm, all these are chip companies. When they when they release their chips, they also release um, a big manual of um, uh, what are the assembly level instructions and uh, how it is to be uh, managed. There are registers, there are different uh, cores, and um, how how is the interface between cores and uh, uh, things like that. The, it, it's a big manual, uh, it, and uh, only specific people read that. Uh, people who write uh, probably operating systems or who write code for specific devices, uh, which does not contain operating systems, um, they will read it and they write the code in that. So uh, the use case that uh, assembly level uh, languages that uh, 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 it, it solves the use case that uh, you know you don't need a, a machine code anymore. Okay, so um, uh, it is very specific of for chip. Uh, so uh, the examples are uh, where it can be used uh, is, for example, uh, you have very uh, cons uh, uh, space constraint such as uh, your hearing de devices or some device which is uh, running um, uh, running on someone's knees just to monitor uh, some some kind of uh, important information or maybe there are variables uh, such as uh, or watchers um, or uh, highly uh, cr critical um, critical uh, devices which are um, which need uh, uh, only processing which uh, there is no space to install even operating system so such devices um, can be written uh, in uh, assembly level language and uh, um, can be uh, written in assembly level and can be um, uh, deployed so also for example 
uh, if there is a <coughs> if if there are um, uh, uh, mobile towers uh, where uh, mm-hmm. the base band uh, devices are uh, trying to convert audio into um, uh, the general analog um, uh, mes- uh, analog information into digital information and converting it back so there we cannot uh, really afford to uh, uh, slow down um, slow down the process uh, it needs to be on time and uh, so such things maybe uh, it is better to write in assembly level language but however there are assembly uh, there are high level languages such as c c++ which uh, automatically uh, uh, not automatically uh, which uh, which can generate uh, uh, a very good uh, uh, machine code um, and uh, which can be uh, very uh, uh, optimized for particular uh, device so coming to uh, high level languages high level languages are nothing but um, an automation of um, uh, assembly level uh, language so uh, why is it auto- uh, why is it uh, why uh, these languages have come into place is um, is because uh, see we have different operating systems there, there there used to be a lot of operating systems before and now uh, the major operating systems are uh, linux um, there is uh, windows and there is uh, uh, mac os and there is android android which is uh, which is uh, built on uh, linux kernel so there is, uh, so these are the operating systems but you can write uh, code in one um, uh, in in one uh, machine or one uh, one operating system uh, so uh, the job of operating system is to make sure that uh, there is no dependency in, on hardware that means when you uh, that when you install hardware uh, sorry when you install um, operating system you, uh, you can install it on your intel chip intel uh, laptop or you can install it on amd laptop or you can install it in um, uh, any other uh, 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 chip and even uh, intel itself has different versions and uh, these things are abstracted that means these things are taken care by uh, operating system uh, software it it, uh, it makes makes it easier and not to worry about um, what is the uh, hardware or hardware architecture that is lying um, below the uh, operating system so we have uh, uh, one layer which is hardware and the next layer is operating system uh, which is installed on uh, on a certain uh, hardware and on top of it uh, we are trying to write um, programs now uh, we have solved different problems so far so now uh, see uh, the higher level languages uh, solve the problem of um, uh, uh, so problem of writing uh, uh, code in assembly level language that means it is really difficult to maintain this assembly level language and uh, it is high, very much tied to uh, uh, tied to tied to um, a particular uh, particular uh, uh, machine uh, for example uh, if you have to write uh, uh, in python uh, just to print something it's like print hello world but uh, the same program if you write it in uh, uh, f- uh, for uh, x86 uh, machines it's an architecture um, so it will be it will be looking something like this and uh, same thing on a, on a free bsd ar- architecture uh, it will be looking like this so both of these programs actually uh, it looks completely different so uh, you need to be very um, uh, very much an uh, 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 specialist to write uh, this assembly level languages first you need to write, read the manual and then you read now you need to write the programs that work on um, uh, uh, work on the, that particular device all right so uh, that is the problem that uh, uh, high level languages solve it is an automation on top of assembly level languages but uh, when you f- finally compile it and generate executables uh, you get an uh, object code and also an uh, object code uh, which can be uh, which will be loaded onto the um, ram uh, by operating system so that is the job of uh, operating system okay so uh, but uh, the, uh, there is a uh, there is one more problem here so we have a specific uh, 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 specific hardware and uh, and uh, uh, f- for example if you write a program in uh, c++ something like this uh, and compile it and uh, you get an executable and then that executable cannot be copy and pasted onto the linux system um, that is because linux doesn't know the internals of uh, that particular um, uh, machine code because for example if uh, because it uh, every operating system uh, always puts some headers on top of uh, executables for example this is a dos header um, so uh, this is specific for uh, uh, systems which are uh, which are uh, 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 running windows operating system 
and then there are headers and there is also way to there are different architectures of operating systems itself so that is why it's uh, um, uh, when you write a program in uh, in in uh, um, windows uh, in c c c or c++ so uh, the main problem is solved that, that means now you can uh, uh, you don't need to uh, learn a specific assembly level language you just need to write it um, uh, in a generic way operating system will take care to uh, execute it that means uh, say for example um, uh, on the same machine uh, on the same laptop you can uh, uh, install windows machine and you can compile this pro uh, program and run it and then uh, so then same source code uh, the same source code can be uh, on the same laptop you can install uh, uh, linux and then you can compile it and you can run but you cannot copy the executables because compilation takes care of um, uh, how how it, how it's a, it, it is specific for a certain target and um, and uh, and it uh, it does the job of uh, putting onto the specific uh, uh, operating system because internally th there are operating system calls uh, such as how, how to load where to load and how to calculate uh, the empty spaces inside the ram and all these things uh, they are different in the uh, windows as well as um, linux okay so um, so the takeaway from this uh, high level language code is that uh, if you write, if you want your uh, high-level language code to be executed, you need to compile it and then um, uh, use it. So there is a, there is multiple co compilation. For example, uh, if if I write uh, a program uh, or build a software uh, which is uh, say for for big bank, and a bank is uh, using a, a big uh, uh, big server at uh, uh, some place, and it is currently running on Windows. And then uh, what happens is uh, Windows says, uh, okay, uh, I cannot support this any uh, this uh, hardware anymore. Um, you need to uh, kind of reinstall or um, recompile your <coughs> software and uh, uh, give me a new uh, uh, new software uh, so that uh, for uh, newer Windows version it, it is compatible. So what happens is for su such big uh, uh, big companies, uh, say uh, uh, State Bank of India. Uh, uh, maybe there is a company, uh, uh, something like um, uh, Infosys or IBM or Accenture, who is uh, who is uh, trying to uh, who has written this banking software, and then uh, uh, maybe their uh, their uh, uh, their contract or uh, um, their contract is over. Maybe they uh, they develop it for ten years, but the banks are still using it for next five years, thinking that uh, okay, it's running well. Why do we need to ins uh, invest on um, uh, invest money on engineers? So the project is complete. Um, maybe there is a little bit support, maintenance support, but uh, the actual uh, people who can uh, uh, rework on uh, rewriting the uh, basic uh, uh, basic things that is uh, operating system uses. Uh, so they are not there, or uh, uh, it's difficult to write. So the main problem is uh, you cannot uh, plug uh, plug out uh, the banking software. And then um, uh, put it on the next uh, newer versions of Windows, or even if they want to move from Windows to Linux or some other operating system. So, uh, so it's really difficult. So there is you need to recompile, and then you need to, um, if, if at all possible, it is re, you need to recompile for that uh, particular architecture, and then you need to um, uh, uh, install the software. So uh, whenever there is a change in uh, soft uh, operating system and uh, or hardware change, so software is bound to be changed. So in all these languages, so assembly level language, anyways, it is directly tied to your machine, and it's very specific for CPU. And um, this uh, higher higher level languages um, such as uh, C and C plus plus. So they are uh, while compiling itself, we need to sp uh, specify that okay, now this executable is made for this target. And only then uh, the comp uh, only then the uh, software is uh, installed, so uh, uh, generated and installed. So uh, that is a problem. So now, so if you change hardware and if you change operating system, so there was an idea that okay, yeah, even after changing these two things, I don't need to be uh, need uh, necessity of uh, uh, changing the software. Why do I need the ch uh, need to change uh, change the software? So. Uh, I am not willing to change. So I, there needs to be some way to uh, solve this problem. So there were uh, um, new languages in the market a uh, couple of decades ago, such as Java. Java solved this problem uh, very beautifully. 
So what uh, what Java does is uh, uh, if you try to install Java, uh, what it does is um, uh, it, it installs a Java Virtual Machine. Um, it's uh, and uh, it has a runtime environment for itself. So um, coming here, coming here, it solves the problem of uh, cross compilation. That means. Say for example, the banking software uh, was written in uh, uh, x86 machine, and uh, then uh, you kind of generate a specific uh, executable and put it onto the different machine. So that is how it used to be done before. Um, for example, uh, now you, uh, there are uh, Raspberry Pi uh, uh, chips which are uh, available for cheaper rates to encourage uh, engineers and um, innovators to um, work on it. So uh, to generate a uh, Raspberry Pi uh, executable, um, it is, it, you cannot just uh, simply log into uh, log in and uh, use it like a monitor or things like that. Um, uh, but there are interfaces. But however, the, the basic chip uh, doesn't come with that. So what we sh usually do is uh, uh, we kind of uh, get all the library files that that are related to Raspberry Pi, and then uh, you use a certain compiler. Uh, and then specific specifically tell the compiler that okay my target machine is actually not the windows computer but the raspberry pi that means once the executable is generated that uh, pi executable pi executable is generated actually you cannot run it on the windows machine itself even even though it is uh, 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 compiled it here so then this needs to be copied to um, uh, uh, raspberry pi and then here it will be able, uh, it will be able to execute so this cross compilation problem is solved by uh, high level languages such as uh, uh, java and python so um, how it uh, java and python have a similar uh, way to, to solve this problem so once you install uh, python or java uh, what it comes with a virtual machine a python virtual machine it uh, we can also call it as interpreter so the idea behind it is okay you you, you have a source code source code is nothing but the, the code that humans write and then that code is uh, uh, compiled and uh, that uh, compiled code is uh, 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 converted to a byte code that means once you compile the python code you get a byte code and then that byte code is consumed by virtual machine not by operating system so virtual machine does the job of translating those instructions into the machine code so now we have a uh, we have one more layer on top of operating system, which is um, a virtual machine, and uh, you can uh, it will take care of uh, um, uh, translating uh, byte code into the um, machine code. So byte code is nothing but uh, uh, it's not a uh, it's not to be consumed by operating system or it is uh, it it is not intended to be to be consumed by uh, a certain chip. But it is uh, it is to be consumed by the virtual machine that we install uh, while installing Python or uh, Java. So this is how the process uh, in the Python uh, works. And the, the main problem that it Python solves um, or the Java solves here is because once I get all these PYC files uh, and uh, I can also create a package or um, something like that, and which which are nothing but bunch of uh, PYC files uh, or uh, bytecode, and I can simply copy paste it to anywhere. Uh, wherever uh, Python is running, so it doesn't matter. Uh, you have a you know, different arch architecture of uh, uh, chips, or you have a you know, different operating system. It doesn't matter. I can just copy paste that uh, uh, install that uh, package directly onto the Mac OS, or Android systems, um, Windows systems, Linux systems. So this is uh, this is called as portability. That means you can port the program that is uh, that is um, uh, written uh, or written once uh, and executed anywhere so uh, it's it, it is also uh, it is it's is called like this uh, write once execute anywhere so that is a uh, that is a term that the computer language scientists use so write it once complete uh, uh, install it and use it anywhere so that is the philosophy behind the uh, virtual machine all right so, so far, uh, any questions here? Uh -huh. No. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, I, I think some of you have uh, worked on Python already. So, uh, this is for um, like plain beginners. So, 
um uh, if you have if you already have a python uh, installed um it's good or else you can just go to google and search install python and uh, you'll get a lot of uh, uh, you'll get a link um, and you can simply install it it's not a big uh, thing so how do we check uh, whether the python is installed or not um, i'll just show you go to uh, command line uh, on windows and uh, linux you can use uh, your command line as well so just open the uh, open the command line and then type python and uh, give uh, enter so uh, you get something like uh, there is a blinking blob, uh, uh, blinking uh, cursor here so and uh, it is it, it is uh, having a great three uh, so three credence uh, symbols so this means we have entered into uh, the python um, actually this is a, a python executable it is uh, waiting for an instruction to be sent to it uh, such as i can write um, print um, and it just simply prints and it is now still writing uh, to be uh, uh, to get some more commands i can even uh, write some variables a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 and i can simply sum it up uh, like this so actually you can also um, write complicated statements such as um, uh, for loop and then if condi if else conditions uh, and things like that but um, usually interpreter is used uh, just to uh, try out some some uh, code snippets small code snippets and then um, it is, and the problem with interpreter is uh, uh, interpreter uh, screen or interpreter uh, uh, terminal is that once you quit uh, interpreter the you cannot access uh, any of the variables that you have uh, uh, tried to uh, use here and then uh, if you try to open it again um, a, the, those variables are gone vanished uh, it is just like um, it's a temporary uh, a temporary thing so to make sure that uh, whatever we write it is in a persistent memory what we do is um, uh, obviously we write code in 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 files so um, once you type python into the terminal uh, you get uh, what kind of uh, uh, version you have i have a uh, 3.104 and this is build information that is related to that particular um, python um, uh, 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 python executable and then it also uh, tells okay well, which is uh, which is the which is the version a further version that is uh, this is intel machine and it is 32 bit machine and it is installed on Win windows 32 os so um, these are the information that it gives if you are using linux uh, uh, this this will change uh, to something like uh, it, it will say x86 architecture or um, some bsd uh, uh, it is installed in bsd or something like that and uh, um, here it will it will tell that okay it, it this won't change because if you are installing uh, it uh, linux is on the same machine okay so virtual machine is very specific um, uh, for that particular uh, hardware and uh, operating system and uh, virtual machine will take care of uh, you give me anything i i have already abstracted um, operating system and uh, lower layers so you don't worry about uh, changing hardware and uh, changing uh, operating systems i will take care of that so that is the assurance that is given by the virtual uh, machines and don't confuse uh, get confused by uh, uh, virtual machines by uh, uh, because there are different uh, there is also a virtual machine uh, terminology that is used in um, different context uh, such as uh, VMware provides virtual machine that means you can have multiple uh, operating systems running on the uh, same uh, it's like uh, you put an operating system on top of an operating system so uh, that is a different thing here uh, here virtual machine uh, means the python virtual machine uh, which is also called as an AI interpreter or java virtual machine jvm or uh, uh, what we call it as okay so uh, that is the context and um, so let us uh, try to open a file and uh, uh, write uh, write, uh, write first program okay so i'll just clear this off okay okay the screen that you are seeing is uh, uh, is an ide ide is nothing but uh, nothing uh, nothing but an um, uh, a fancy notepad that means uh, you can write text and uh, those uh, that text will be highlighted uh, according to the language that you are using and it gives tells a uh, line number so if, uh, say for example you, if you want to use notepad um, actually program can be written uh, anywhere uh, you just need a text editor 
So if you write, try to write uh, programs here, something like uh, hello, um, and uh, also you can save it as uh, uh, some, uh, some file dot py, um, and then you can execute. You can still execute it. That is not a pro problem. Okay, that's not a problem. The main thing is uh, uh, so. Um, Initially, when the programming uh, was in the initial phases, the, there were editors such as VI editors, uh, Emacs, um, and um, things like that. So people used to write code in that, and then now uh, there are uh, there are so many IDEs which help developers to write programs. Uh, that means, uh, for example, integrated uh, development environment means, for example, I have the I have the command line here uh, just just below the code, and I can simply run it. So this is nothing but the command line that we opened uh, uh, a couple of minutes um, earlier. This same uh, command uh, command line uh, prompt is uh, terminal is integrated here. So that is why it's called as like integrated development uh, environment. So you can in integrate a lot of things so, such as uh, you can integrate uh, some uh, uh, something like uh, uh, tools which does uh, me memory profiling, some tools uh, which does uh, automatic testing. Uh, and uh, a lot of things so the you can uh, there are ways to integrate uh, things to this uh, ide so th that is why uh, uh, that is why people love uh, uh, such ideas so uh, uh, examples of uh, id are uh, uh, the popular eclipse um, the, there is also pycharm uh, which is used uh, for python and um, uh, uh even uh, uh the old uh, visual basic had its own id and uh, dot net uh, and all these things could could be written in um, a certain id so windows used to uh, uh, deploy that um, id so that that was called as i think visual code or something okay so this is also from microsoft this is uh, now it's uh, uh, all over the world, uh, people use this, and this is quite um, uh, quite uh, helpful, and it's very easy to use, and um, uh, people love this. So I prefer to use this ID, but uh, uh, anytime you can write it in any ID, you, even you can write it on Notepad. All right. So I prefer using this. So we will continue to use this uh, ID um, uh, uh, for the rest of the uh, session. Okay. So I will just write uh, uh, a simple program um, such as uh, I'll just comment this or delete this. Okay. Okay. I'll just delete uh, all of this. I will just simply write the same uh, statement here. Uh, this is just to learn how to write it in a file and uh, how to save it and how do we execute it all right so okay. so, the way that you execute this program is just uh, type python and if you don't give any arguments and just press press enter it opens up the uh, it opens up the interpreter here. Um, if you give the file name, it simply executes uh, that this instruction. And since there are no more instructions below it, it simply executes this, and then it comes out. So you might be thinking that uh, okay, um, uh, why? Uh, no, is it is it the only way to uh, only way to um, uh, execute the program? Uh, no, there are uh, uh, there are a couple of ways. One is uh, uh, you uh, you do it on the terminal. You just call that uh, this one, and then there is also uh, you can go to um, go to um, that particular um, uh, Python script. These are called uh, if you write it in uh, if you don't write any functions and classes, it's simply called a script. Or uh, if if you write uh, classes and if you write functions and write it beautifully, it is called as uh, 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 Python uh, programs. Okay, so both are actually same thing. Um, so I can just double click on this. It comes, it executes, and it vanishes. So what exactly is happening is because uh, is uh, is the thing that we discussed in the beginning of the session. 
so once i double click once i double click operating system gets an uh, info information that okay the user has double click that means i need to execute this on my uh, and execute this i mean i take this and load it into the ram and uh, cpu will uh, try to get this uh, and hand it over to cpu so uh, cpu executes and the, since there are no more uh, uh, no more uh, instructions it just exits so that is the reason it just vanishes okay. so if you don't want want it to be vanished and uh, if you want it to be uh, like alive forever uh, you can also do it uh, do something like um, um, you can just write a uh, write a simple uh, while uh, while statement while while loop it is called as while loop and uh, you can also do something like um, uh, you can simply uh, write uh, uh, write this and uh, uh, write nothing here that means there is a uh, uh, right pass but uh, just to uh, just just for a demonstration i'll write um, some variable so that we can see that uh, it is continuously executing and we get an assurance that okay, it is running in the um, uh, running and uh, uh, it is never ending okay so we will try to print a print a uh, value of a and then increment a by 1 a is equal to a plus 1 all right so let us try to um, execute this statement let us see what is happening so you can see that uh, the program is being executed and uh, what is happening is uh, i have initialized a to 0 and then uh, there's a there's a loop the loop uh, is nothing but a statement to uh, for the for the um, uh, for, uh, loop is nothing but it's like okay we'll do it again and again okay so uh, you can break out of the loop uh, in different ways until uh, uh, until the uh, until it is true that means uh, actually you can write some statements um, uh, here such as a uh, until a is uh, not equal to 100 or uh, until 100 loops also you can control the loops that we will see in the next uh, session you can control the, the loops and this is a, this is a initialization of loop at once uh, once you initialize and then uh, it checks for the condition and uh, uh, it executes this block of code and then it keeps on executing because this is always true so until this is uh, a false it will uh, it will seem it will simply uh, keep on executing so this is the this is how this program is running now how do i stop this uh, programs so as i said you can send an interrupt so i will press control c which is nothing but an uh, interrupt uh, to operating system it is it is telling that okay there i got an uh, i got a key keyboard interrupt and it stopped so uh, the lesson here is uh, we have written a program and uh, we saw how it gets executed and if there are no uh, no um, uh, no more uh, uh, no more uh, instructions uh, it simply exits and uh, if 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 the if there are uh, uh, if there are instructions uh, that needs to be executed they just simply uh, keeps on executing and then um, it exits until you get an interrupt or it is uh, it is it is closed uh, by force all right so this is uh, this is how um, uh, starting from how we started from uh, how uh, how the program gets executed we just talked talk about uh, and there are uh, the three key people here one is uh, 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 three key people in the sense in terms of memory and execution there is hard disk there is ram and there is cpu the whole idea is it's like a supply chain uh, system uh, from hard disk or uh, anywhere <coughs> anywhere else you try to kind of uh, for example if you are browsing internet you are not using uh, uh, hard disk as much you are using directly from a different hard disk i mean uh, data is stored somewhere in the server but it's still in hard disk uh, so uh, or uh, computer generated uh, data is coming into your pc and then uh, from that particular port uh, you are reading the data and trying to put it inside the inside the ram and then uh, ram takes uh, and uh, from the ram it is sent into cpu for execution so this is this is a uh, this is a simple supply chain but uh, uh, operating system itself is a it's, it's a vast subject uh, so but for uh, for people who do not have programming background this is a bare minimum uh, things to understand and we we must un also understand how the processes um, uh, work that means it gets loaded by operating system and then um, uh, there is also different states of processes it, it is in ready state and then um, uh, it, there is waiting state there is execution state and there is a termination state 
so uh, there are diff- different ways to get terminated uh, one is by signals and uh, one is when you don't have anything else to uh, else to uh, uh, execute so uh, these are the things that you need to keep in mind uh, whenever uh, you write programs and uh, uh, also we spoke about um, uh, about uh, what is the necessity of um, assembly level language it's a it's a it's a easiest way to uh, convey instructions to um, uh, that particular machine or uh, chip uh, and then there are higher level languages which uh, which kind of uh, abstracts this assembly level uh, languages and um, it automatically generates uh, object code or, or machine code that is to be consumed by the processor so this is the evolution from machine code to assembly code to higher level languages then there is a problem of portability you simply cannot copy paste um, the the, uh, the compiled programs and then uh, there is code maintainability problem and then this is solved by virtual uh, machines that are um, uh, such as java virtual machine and uh, python virtual machine so the main difference between the java and uh, uh, python in terms of uh, language usability it solves the same, it solves the same problem uh, as uh, um, uh, uh, as far as uh, the portability is, co- is concerned it's also uh, python solves another problem uh, python has a uh, has a uh, philosophy that the any code that is written uh, in python it should be easily readable and uh, uh, that means uh, uh, it it forces people to use certain indentations and the blocks and it doesn't have any braces such as uh, c and c++ have uh, it uh, doesn't have uh, statement endings uh, because in C++ all the statements are um, uh, end of the statement is uh, uh, is uh, is put by uh, semicolon. If the if, if the compiler says semicolon, that means it it says okay this is the end of the statement. All right. So this is how the evolution and journey of uh, uh, languages, uh, different chips, different operating system uh, has uh, uh, has been and uh, now uh, without uh, no, without thinking about hardware as well as uh, operating systems regardless of what is running uh, below i can simply uh, compile this i can build softwares and then simply directly put it uh, anywhere that means uh, if there is a uh, uh, the, uh, the, the banking system if it decides uh, to change the system um, uh, say hardware if they want to change uh, go for a newer hardware they can simply change the hardware and uh, use uh, a different uh, different uh, operating system altogether and uh, still install the same software uh, after installing the virtual machine uh, uh, so uh, the main portability problem is solved so this these are the things that you need to uh, remember always and uh, if anyone asks uh, which is the better language there is no good language and better language so the more closer to uh, if you if there is a requirement that you need to be very closer to hardware such as uh, uh, such as uh, air, air traffic monitoring systems or uh, uh, auto piloting systems uh, or uh, uh, things like auto driving uh, automatic driving and then uh, uh, hearing aids uh, or uh, uh, any kind of systems which are uh, real time um, uh, real time systems then it needs to be very uh, all the programs needs to be very near to the hardware uh, hardware so in that cases we use uh, either we use assembly code or we write uh, uh, code in c c++ uh, which is uh, which is pretty near to um, uh, hardware so uh, and then if the if the systems can be uh, allowed a little bit leniency in terms of uh, performance or in terms of uh, real time such as uh, banking systems uh, i don't mind uh, uh, money being transferred couples of couple of uh, seconds later if i transfer money to any of one of you um, it is it is uh, it is okay if uh, if i get if you get uh, money after a couple of 2 seconds uh, uh, late so I, I don't mind it so transactions are uh, fine so uh, such systems uh, uh, have a, a requirement of portability because uh, every now and then the data centers are changing so every now and then uh, for for example our mobiles you, there used to be samsung chips uh, and now uh, there could be a uh, qualcomm snapdragon chip there could be broadcom chips uh, there could be any number of chips which are coming but the android system takes care of uh, uh, abstracting that hardware and uh, java which is installed on the android uh, people can simply write programs and just uh, compile versions they can simply ins- you can uh, simply install that software from android uh, uh, android uh, play store uh, without even uh, get, without it getting uh, recompiled 
All right. So you can simply uh, there are no different versions of that software for that particular mobile. You can simply uh, if it is written in Java and Android is running Java virtual machine, you can simply go anytime um, and uh, simply download the same software and still have it running running it on your phone. So uh, this is the crux of um, the basic um, program and how the computers work. All right, so uh, that is uh, uh, that is what I had to convey to um, uh, in the in the in the first class. Um, so if you have any sort of questions, any sort of uh, doubts that you have, um, you can um, you, you can uh, ask me. And um, uh, if you don't uh, have any questions right now, and you get uh, questions later, you are free to ask. And uh, since we are all like friends already. So uh, just uh, just ask. It's not a typical class. So uh, just ask, and I'll I'll try my best to um, uh, answer your problems. Okay. So uh, do you have any questions right now? In 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 the next session, what we will do is uh, uh, we will uh, learn. Uh, we'll start learning Python specific things, uh, which are data types, variables, how to write statements, um, how to write if else uh, conditions, uh, how to write a loop and uh, write a small program um, something like that we'll do some activity so from uh, next session it will be more mostly hands-on i request uh, you guys to um, have your laptop uh, uh, laptop ready so that uh, uh, you can practice the problems uh, and then also uh, for in in the in the every uh, uh, at the end of the session i will be uh, uh, releasing uh, publishing quizzes Please take that and it will help you to understand uh, uh, your current understanding level and also uh, it, will, it will help you to focus on the things that uh, you still have uh, some gaps. So once you do that, uh, it, uh, it really uh, makes you a better uh, programmer in, uh, uh, in Python and uh, also uh, it's not a, it's not a uh, closed uh, examination or something like that. It is simply that uh, I have, you have a question, if you don't know the answer, just Google it. Uh, Google it and try to read that particular concept couple of paragraphs um, and then understand okay this is how it, it is there and then you come back to the question and answer it. So there is no uh, evaluation system or something like that because this is not a certification course. So uh, that is how you need to work on quizzes and uh, also there will be assignments which will be given from uh, session 2 uh, in the sense programming assignments um, depending on uh, your uh, particular level. and. Uh, uh, I uh, I expect uh, that you complete these assignments um, uh, so that it is encouraging for me to uh, continue to the next level, and uh, it is uh, uh, it is good for you so that you I work on assignments and learn a lot of things. Um, and if you if you are struck, just uh, ask me uh, without any hesitation, and I will tell you uh, how it uh, why it is failing, and uh, uh, we can make it right. So that is the format that we, we are going to follow. So please uh, uh, do your assignments uh, and then uh, 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 just for this one month, uh, if you focus on this uh, bootcamp, uh, I'm sure that will you will come out of uh, um, this uh, all these sessions as a very good programmer and we'll do something uh, really uh, tangible at the end of the program because in the, in the, in the first few sessions, we'll just learn about uh, Python and then uh, in in rest of the uh, rest half of the uh, session we will be doing uh, some kind of project uh, some kind of um, uh, really interesting uh, project okay so many uh, we'll do a mini project so to do that mini project you need to uh, write uh, a lot of programs uh, that are given uh, in the assignments and also it may be uh, it will if you are preparing for interviews um, it is the best way to uh, attend quizzes and uh, assignments as much as possible and it will be very interesting. So uh, give me your one month, and uh, um, I will assure you that uh, you'll be you'll be a very good programmer. Okay, so that is the expectation that from you. So I don't have any other expectation. Just uh, do assignments and quizzes, and uh, ask questions uh, without any hesitations. All right.